topic. Um, uh, Chloe Condon, Con oh, I'm so, I didn't uh, check the pronunciation before. Chloe Condon is a developer evangelist at CodeFresh, and her talk is called Why You Need to Stop Using the Staging Server. So let's all give her a round of applause. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, y'all. <laughs> Uh, I find that when I come to Texas, my use of y'all goes up about 100%. Um, so I thought I'd start out with a kind of funny Texas story before I get very technical. Um, so when I was younger, so to give a little background on myself, I come from a very non-traditional route to engineering. I was actually an actress before I went into engineering. Um, and I, but I did play with computers a lot. And I had a game that was called Opening Night. Did anybody ever play it? It was kind of this simulated theater game where you wrote a script and a Siri-like voice would say whatever you typed. So it would be like, hello and welcome to my play. And, um, and you had these characters that you would drag around on the screen. I promise this relates to Texas, you guys. And, um, and you could make your own plays and write your own plays. And, and being a actress, a, a young eight-year-old actress probably, um, I, I really, it was what really got me interested in computers to begin with. And I had a character in this very elaborate three-part play that I wrote called The Old Jazz Man, which was a, about a lonely woman whose unicorn comes to life. I was, that was like six or seven or eight, you guys, like bear with me. And um, the unicorn comes to life and there was a character in it named Texas Joe and he said y'all a lot. So it's very exciting now that I get to travel to Austin and to Dallas for all these lovely conferences because uh, I have now learned that nobody says y'all every other word here. Not everyone anyway. So <laughs> anyway, I will go ahead and get started, y'all. Um, so my talk today is called Why You Need to Stop Using the Staging Server. Um, so it's a it's very controversial uh, title, but I'm not telling you to completely get rid of it. Don't worry. This kind of covers the same topics that a lot of other people have been talking today about kind of what I want you to walk away from this talk thinking is a very different way to view your staging server. Um, so for quite some time, we've been implementing our CI CD and the staging server has played a very intricate part to that. Um, so I'd like to show you today that with given today's latest technologies that we can actually move everything over a little bit and start thinking differently about our staging server, the staging server. I guess I capitalized it here. So I'll go to my next slide. Cool, so a little bit about me. Um, my name is Chloe, as I mentioned before. I am a developer as well as a developer evangelist at CodeFresh. We're a Docker native CI CD. Um, I'm also a blogger about all things container, Docker, and diversity related. If you're thinking, where have I seen that girl before? I'm the one in that article about being a woman in tech where I'm giving a thumbs up in front of a big crowd of other men. Um, <laughs> it's a pretty popular blog that's been going around. I would definitely check it out if you're wondering what it's like to be a woman at a tech conference. Um, but I'm very excited to see a lot of women here. That's awesome. Um, you can follow me on Medium and you can also follow me on Twitter under my name. So a little bit about CodeFresh. Um, we are a Docker native CI CD, known particularly for our incredibly fast builds, our unique image management capabilities, and our ability to spin up pre-staging environments. Um, we've really been built on Docker since day one, so we understand a lot of the pain points of Docker users. Um, so I'm gonna go into a, a little bit about containers today. Who in the room is working with containers? Is anybody? Awesome, perfect. Um, well, this, this talk is for you. Uh, great, so uh, here is my agenda. Um, so first, I'm gonna talk about common CI CD implementations, and then I'll go into the challenges that we run into with those implementations, and then talk briefly about um, containers and just their impact on traditional CI CD. So if you are not working with containers, maybe you'll want to switch after this talk. <laughs> so. I'm gonna assume that most of us in the room have seen the Git flow. My PowerPoint slides got a little screwed up, so it's the beauty of live theater. Um, so I won't go into too much detail here since we're all pretty familiar, but just to break it down pretty simply. Um, so this is just a very basic model of a Git flow. I'm not here to tell you that you're doing it wrong or anything like that. Your CI CD is your CI CD, but just a basic overview. Um, so whenever a developer gets a task assigned to him, um, he's gonna go to that development staging branch uh, and work on his feature. And then at that point, he will run any unit test if he's, if he's being safe and he's covering his bases. And then um, eventually when he does submit a pull request um, and that gets approved, we're doing a lot of the heavy lifting on testing over here on this side in the 
<laughs> uncontained box over here. So all of our unit tests, our integration tests, our performance tests, manual testing, security testing, all of these things, pushing it to the registry, deploying to production, all of that happens at the staging server. And I'm sure that we've all run into bottlenecks at the staging server who's using staging. Um, we've all run into people breaking the staging server, which can be really frustrating um, as the developer who breaks the staging server and as the developers waiting to get on there. Um, but looking at this, we're, we're doing a lot of the heavy lifting on over on this right side. So if we look at this slightly different timeline here, it's basically the same thing, but on a different graph. Um, so this line here on the bottom is just kind of an approximated how much co the expanded cost is at each point, but it gets more expensive the closer we get to production, um, which is kind of an interesting thing, right? Because usually in, in traditional CI, CD, we're running all these integration tests and unit tests towards the end. Um, and who's to say that we can't run those earlier? Um, there's going to be less of a chance if we're testing a lot earlier if something's going to suddenly explode at staging. And you'll see at the bottom part here, it's, it's much more costly. Um, so when we're working on our feature branch, it's much easier to incorporate those changes when we're actually working on the feature, right? Because the usual mentality when we're at staging is, well, you know, actually, you know, we here's, here's the feedback that I want to give you on what you just worked on, but we'll do it in the next iteration. And I don't know when that's going to be. I'd much rather just fix there in the moment. So another aspect of the traditional way that we kind of implement our continuous integration is that handshake that we have between development and deployment. So a typical handshake will be a label or a stamp. Um, that can also be test reports, uh, test results. Sometimes it's any proposed changes that we have to the database and a list of any of the known issues. So communicating that as part of the release notes, it's usually um, part of our deliverables. So what are the challenges? <laughs> so we've touched on a few, obviously, but I will just review a couple more that we see. So first, we're all familiar with somebody broke staging, which <laughs> I know is not fun when I've broken staging, staging before, and I know it's not fun when we're having to wait for other people, um, especially if you're having to fix that issue. Um, frustrating for the whole team, right? So, um, it, and it, and so when we have these issues, when we have these breaking staging issues, it's a huge bottleneck. We have people who are waiting to use our staging server. Um, and a lot of times, this is the first time that we're testing for UI. And it's the first time that anybody is seeing my feature in the full application context. Also, there's no room for feedback until it's much too late. Um, I'm getting feedback at the staging server. I want to implement that feedback, and I really don't know when I'm going to be able to get around to that again. Um, so usually the mentality is like, let's just ship it. Um, I know personally, I would, being an actress in my previous life, I like to take direction and then and then act on that direction. So um, I would much rather get that feedback now versus later. And lastly, we have our frictions between development, staging, and production. So there's always frictions that we find between these things, and usually. It's not an issue with our code, right? It's something that to do with the environmental variables. It's something to do with you know not not having the correct configurations to set those up, and eventually we have the, the issues that just aren't around the code. Um, they're really about the environment. So to summarize, and before I talk a little bit more about containers, the main issue here is that co code changes and pull requests are being tested much more extensively, and for the first time later in the life cycle. So there's really no room for feedback, as I mentioned before. And um, there's kind of that common joke of, of what the customer wanted, what the developer did, what the salesperson said they were going to get. So what if there was a way <laughs> that we could actually show our feature branch what we are working on earlier in the life cycle? So this is a great segue to containers, because as we all know with containers, we have everything in one place. That includes all our CI, all of our environments. So it's much easier to kind of spin up these pre-staging environments. Um, so <laughs> it's, that way we, we don't really get those frictions between the different ones. The odds of something all of a sudden exploding by the time we get staging are going to be a lot less likely. So here's the fun part. Um, I love seeing how many hands are in the audience when I asked who's using containers. How many people are using containers in production? I'm just curious. OK. 
Cool. Good amount. Good crowd. <laughs> so as I mentioned before, containers have fundamentally changed the way that we're developing. Um, it makes the operational part a lot, a lot easier for us, and it helps us rethink the way that we did things before. So I'll start with the basic kind of impact of containers on CI CD, and then I'll get a little more complex. Um, so the first and very basic thing is we can run of all, all of our CI inside of a container, which is awesome. Um, and as you also know, Every time we run a new container, it's a fresh new instance of that image. So we're almost completely eliminating any chance of new builds being impacted by previous builds. So the second aspect is that the unit test itself. Um, so when we hand that off to operations and we deploy it, it's, it's a much more reliable and self-contained unit. So we know that our Docker image has passed our unit test, our integration test, our security tests. Um, and the likelihood of a Docker image all of a sudden just working completely differently in production than, than it did when you ran it locally, is it's much less frequent. And the chances of that code kind of breaking from one stage to another are, are going to be a lot less likely. And the Docker image is just a much more complete way of describing our application and describing our code. So it's not only our code, but it's everything else that we need to run with it. So zooming out a little bit from the Docker image itself, um, one of the strong drivers of images is, and containers is microservices. Um, so containers have been built from day one to support microservices. And there's, it has all kinds of ways that we can define the linkages between kind of the different ones, be it Docker Compose or Kubernetes or Mesos. They all have slightly different ways of defining it, but um, they all just they make the application work, right? So with containers, we can actually define an application much easier and with a lot with, with several different microservices at once. So that ultimately allows us to claim, uh, clone the staging environment much earlier on in the process. So at CodeFresh, we really like to call this our staging-like environment. It's our pre-staging environment. Um, we see a lot of success with, especially with companies who are working with clients. They can just quickly spin up a pre-staging environment. The person has to doesn't need to have any technical knowledge at all. We can send that link to them, and they can say, all right, cool. I wanted this font to be in blue, not pink. Can you change it? And that's very easy for me as a developer to do, right? Um, so by being able to spin these up much earlier and really just kind of give a preview, I like to think of it as I would not come up in front of all you lovely people and perform this talk or perform a musical for that matter without doing a rehearsal, much like we do rehearsal dinners for weddings. And I feel the same way about my future. Um, I really want to be able to run it and play with it and see it in, you know, when you're working on it yourself, it's very much in the wild and then you see it in production and it's on the stage, stage and environment. Oh. Um, so I really like to see these pre-staging environments as a rehearsal for my code. So now, the reason I'm saying staging-like environment is we do have a rule that our staging environment has to be as identical as possible to production. Um, so that's because there's certain things that we want to test in the staging environment, right? So let's say I'm running a retail website, and I want to make sure that I can handle 100,000 more users on Black Friday. Well, obviously, I would use my staging environment for that. I want to check for SLA, make sure everything's running smoothly. But by testing some of these other things a lot earlier in the cycle, I know that those are going to pass, and I'm going to have a lot less frictions when I do go there. Um, and then for UI tests, integration tests, we don't necessarily need the scalability of a full-on staging environment to be testing those. So I know that my code is clean, I know that my code is running, and it looks and acts exactly how I want to by the time it goes to production. And with that staging-like environment, kind of reiterating before with those frustrations about not being able to implement the feedback I'm given, I'm able to implement that feedback a lot earlier, which is awesome. I can take the feedback that I'm given, and I can actually have it clean and good to go and exactly how I want it by the time it goes to staging. Um, so I know my feature works as I intended it to, and nothing's holding me back from implementing that change. So you may be asking, <laughs> so we have our staging environment. How do we test for SLA? Well, the typical way that we do this at CodeFresh um, is that you would, as I mentioned before, do that on your staging environment. But you can also run your tests a lot earlier in the life cycle um, on a less scalable environment, and it'll allow you to kind of track those trends. So if you test your performance earlier 
and see over time that your performance is slowing down or not going up, that's a really great way to trigger a reason to go, to go back and revisit what you did and tackle it a lot earlier in the life cycle. So if we go back and we kind of look at our staging environment, spoiler alert, <laughs> um, we can see that all these things can be shifted over to the left. Um, there's really no reason to stick to the way that we've kind of traditionally done CI. Um, we have our staging life environment now and we can kind of test our code earlier for all of these things. So the more we shift these to the left, the faster we can get feedback, the faster we can implement the feedback, the less bottlenecks that we have at staging. Um, and it's a much more streamlined pipeline. Um, and the faster we can push our code into production, because that's all we really want to do, right? We just want to like push code. So last but not least, we have our Docker image. Um, and it's a great revised way of knowing what our deliverables are. So we're handing off a Docker image, and that's much more self-contained. And if an issue is found in the Docker image versus the branch, if I rerun the same image with all the other microservices, then it's much easier to just reproduce that and tackle it ahead of time. So this is the same Git flow from, from before. Uh, <laughs> the fonts are a little off, I apologize about that. But you can see that we've kind of spread out our unit tests a lot more here. So we have our unit test, integration test, performance test, and UX happening here. Um, over in this next step, we've added UI and manual tests, as well as performance tests. So that way, by, we're, by the time we're actually um, you know, submitting our pull request, we know that all of these things are going to pass. And the likelihood of something just breaking because of you know, the staging environment are going to be a lot uh, fewer. So um, if you're unfamiliar with Docker Compose, um, it's one way of kind of zooming out from a single application and being able to get all your microservices, get all your volumes, um, get all the networks kind of formatted between them. And it's a very abstract way of defining your application. Um, and there's a lot of really great ways to do this. You can use Docker Compose, you can use Docker Swarm. Um, Kubernetes is also a really great way to run your containers. Um, so there's a lot of different ways of describing your application. And a lot of them allow you to describe it in the full context. You can actually spin that up a lot easier. So now, with the ability to do this, we can actually run all of our unit tests, all of our integration tests, as kind of this composed unit. So with that pre-staging environment, you can think of it as, all right, I have a chat application, let's say. And with my very simple you know, Node.js chat application, I need Mongo to run it. So by being able to create this pre-staging environment, I can make a composition. I can spin up my application and define the ports that I need, as well as uh, Mongo to run that. I can run all my unit tests and integration tests against it, and then I can shut that down. And then I'll either get you know, a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Did the unit test pass? Did the integration test pass? Yes, no. And then I know that my code is clean, good to go. It's just a very smooth, simple CI CD pipeline. So you can go and build this yourself. Some of you are probably in the process of building this yourself, which is awesome. Um, we really like to think of it as kind of a layer on, on top of what you're already doing. Um, so CodeFresh has already built this. Um, I'll just do my quick little spiel for, for us. Usually this is the part of the presentation where I would give a demo of how we are doing this at CodeFresh, but we don't have the, uh, the computer here to do it. But I will be out in the lobby and would be happy to give you a walkthrough of it. Um, we recently added a Kubernetes integration, which I'm very excited about. I'm actually missing our webinar today to be here talking to you lovely people. Um, but we have this very unique ability to very quickly and easily define our pipeline and spin it up very quickly and be able to share that environment with whoever that may be, a product manager, um, fellow engineers, a customer. They really don't need any technical knowledge because they're just getting the URL and they're able to view that. Um, we use our pre-staging environments in CodeFresh in two ways. One is to run unit tests and integration tests, as I mentioned before. And the second way is just to uh, have that pre-staging environment that I've been talking about in this talk. So I'm very excited to share it. And I'll have my laptop over on the kind of on the conference floor. If you want to come and pull me aside, I'd be happy to show you exactly how we do that. Um, so that is pretty much all from me. Thank you so much for uh, having me, DevOps DFW, and um, have a great rest of the conference, y'all.